Hi, welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're here, there's a very good chance that you followed me over from TikTok. And if not, welcome. It's really cool to meet you. My name is Jenna. I'm from Connecticut. I was a professional makeup artist for about 15 years and 10 years ago I settled on children's face painting and basically never looked back. During quarantine I started face painting on TikTok and doing 60 second makeups and it became really popular. Once everything started to open back up in my state I started bringing my phone on the job with me when I was face painting children and catching their reactions on video and people became pretty obsessed with that and I'm getting a ton of requests to do tutorials and longer videos. So that's what this one's gonna be. This is gonna be Face Painting 101. I'm gonna go through all my products and teach you guys the backbone of face painting. And then going forward, when I post tutorials of specific designs, you guys will be able to refer back to this video to figure out how I do some of the more intricate stuff. The first thing we're gonna talk about is my products. That's what I get the most questions about. We're gonna start easy. When I'm doing line work, which is outlining things or making things like teardrops or tiger stripes, I always use Wolf Brothers. It is my absolute favorite. It gives you a nice, crisp, clean line. I don't use these paints for any background blending because frankly, they don't blend that well. You guys always ask me, when I paint rainbows, how do I do it all at once? I use rainbow cakes or split cakes. This is a perfect example. It's one of my favorites. This gives me the ability to quickly put multiple colors on a child's face and have it blend perfectly. All you do is take a sponge. I get these on Amazon. I'll post a link. It's just a round makeup sponge and I cut them in half and that's it. They're really cheap and they work really, really great. And they're cheap enough that during the pandemic, if you're face painting and you're doing one sponge per child, you can throw them away and not care that much. All of my paints are water-based and water activated. So anytime you wanna use anything, you need to start with water. I keep a little spray bottle with me at every job. You spray your sponge. Once you have your sponge wet, not too wet, just a good, a good damp, I guess. You don't want it dripping. You're just gonna take it and drag it right across your rainbow cake. Do it a few times and you get on your sponge exactly what you want on your face. So once you get here, all you do is tap, 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 and you get a beautifully blended rainbow. So if you were doing this on a child for a design and you wanted to do a tiger, you know, you would come here with it and have the rainbow there. Or if you're doing a butterfly, it would be around the eyes. And it's as easy as that. The paint basically does the work for you. The next thing you guys constantly ask me about are one strokes. This is a one stroke. This is an arty brush cake. I get everything from Silly Farm. I will put links to everything down in the description of the video. So a one stroke has multiple colors all in a row, but it's no more than an inch wide so that you can use an inch brush on it. So one stroke is the same idea. You're just using a brush instead of a sponge. I grabbed my angled brush. Um, you can use a regular, a regular one inch is just, you know, straight across. I just happen to like the angled. So that's the one I grabbed. Same thing, drag it across your paint. You see all of your colors are loaded onto the brush and it's the same deal. Let's go for another spot on the arm. You're just gonna and that's how I get all of those pretty designs when I do princesses or mermaids or anything and it blends everything seamlessly. All right, so we've talked about split cakes, we've talked about one strokes and we've talked about paint for line work and I've told you about sponges. The last thing and the most important thing is your brush. These are my absolute favorite. This is the number four Paint Pal Luxe brush from Silly Farm. Now, I will say, I have just recently been turned on to these. For years and years and years, it's been the Low Cornell Gold Grips, which are also amazing. Silly Farm sent these to me and I immediately fell in love. For me, my round brush, I like it to be a little stiff, not too, too bendy. I want it to have a little bit of pushback when I put it on the skin and I like it to come to a really nice point so that when I do teardrops or thick to thin lines, they end on a really nice sharp point. So that's actually the first thing I'm gonna teach you guys is teardrops. Teardrops are the backbone of face painting. 10 years ago when I started face painting, one strokes, these, they weren't really a big thing. You needed to learn how to do line work if you wanted to be a good face painter. You needed to sponge on the background and draw all of your details. Now, because of one strokes, you don't really have to have good line work. However, 
you're kind of limited if you're only one stroking your face paint designs. You can't really be innovative. You can't do a lot of fancy stuff. And if you want to grow as an artist, you want to have good line work. So teardrops, that's the first thing that we're going to learn because like I said, they're the backbone to face painting. When I'm practicing line work, I always practice in white. It washes off the easiest. Literally one swipe of water will take it right off. You're going to wet your number four brush, just dip it in your water, and you're just going to drag it in your white until it's a nice creamy consistency. You don't want it too thin because then it'll drip. Getting some more water. And you don't want it too thick because then you're not going to get much out of it. And you're going to have to reload your brush quickly. So once your brush is pretty loaded, starting with teardrops, we're going to start on the arm because it's the best way to practice the motion. With your arm, you're going to make your brush kind of stand up. And I want you to think of it like it's a ballerina on her toes. Okay. So we're in ballet and we're up on our toes to do a teardrop. You're going to have her up on her toes. You're going to push and you're going to bring her back up on her toes again. So you get this really nice teardrop. That's really the only word for it. Um, I'm going to do them on my face for you, but to show you that ballerina motion, it's best to do it on the arm. We're going to do it one more time on the arm and then I'm going to show you on the face. So same thing. You're going to ballerina point up. You're going to give it a little push and then come back up to the ballerina point and you get an almost perfect teardrop. Now, some face painters do it a different way that I don't really love, but if you're having trouble getting this motion, you can also drag it and push. And that's another style of teardrops. I'm just not as big of a fan of those. I'm gonna show you on the face now, okay? Because I'm shooting in landscape, for me to see what I'm doing on my face, I have to look away, but you know, it's, it. you get it. All right, so it's the same thing. It's, you know, ballerina point up, push, and then release. And you'll get really fast at it the more you practice. Now, let me tell you how I get my artists who work for me to learn teardrops. Once you've mastered that motion, you have to do it a hundred times on a leg or on your arm, whatever you choose. But every time you mess up and one does not come out great, you have to start over. Renee, for example, had to do this when she started working for me. She's been my assistant for 10 years and she came to me an okay face painter, but she didn't have great line work. She had to do this and she sat and she did it on her legs. And by the time she actually got 100 of them done perfectly, there was no messing them up at that point. So if you wanna learn them and you wanna know them foolproof, no matter what, get that motion down, drag, push and release, push and release, do it a hundred times, but if you mess up, start back over at one. Last thing we're gonna go over in this video are lines going thick to thin or thin to thick. These are gonna help you out if you wanna try any of my tiger designs, butterflies, things like that. These all require thick to thin lines. And it's kind of the same principle as a teardrop, but it's a little easier because it doesn't have to be so quick and you can adjust them really easily. So when I do a tiger stripe, we'll start right here. It's literally just a thin little drag and then I push and I do some wiggles and I come back up and I let it taper out. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You're gonna add more. So the next one, to make it aesthetically pleasing, maybe it would come this way. Wiggle, 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 release it. And then, you know, if it's too thin, you just add a little bit more. Same thing here, push it. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Drag, push, release. Thick to thin lines aren't that bad. They're, they're, they're fairly easy, if I'm being honest. It just takes a little bit of practice to get good control over the brush. Otherwise, you know, you're gonna get like, you know, trying to figure out when to drop it, when to bring it up. Just, the, just a little bit of practice. Once you've mastered these two, is kind of when things start to open up for you to be able to kind of freestyle and freehand stuff. So when, you know, somebody sits in my chair and they're like, I just want a pretty eye design, you know, I put a color down and all I have to do is rely on my teardrop and my thick to thin practicing and the fact that I have good control over my brush and I can come up with some really cute designs just by combining those two. And there's endless possibilities on ways to combine them to make really pretty designs. So that's pretty much it for Face Paint 101. That's literally all the background you need to get started. If you guys want to be able to paint designs that I'm gonna post tutorials to, 
this stuff will definitely help you out. I'm really excited to have you guys here and I'm excited to show you guys more of what I do and explain more in depth my job. And the first tutorial I'm gonna post right after this one is gonna be a tiger. I'm gonna do my ice tiger, but you guys can make it any colors you want when you do it. And let me know in the comments what kind of stuff you guys want me to teach you because I don't have any secrets. I'll show you guys everything that I do no problem. Make sure to subscribe. Make sure to turn the notifications on. I don't know all the things that YouTubers are supposed to say, but I think those are two of them. And I'm really, really excited to have you guys here.